Hi guys, uh, Rob Berridge here from uh, heatengineer.com. Um, just thought I'd do um, <clears throat> a tutorial video um, on our brand new flow calculation tool that we've uh, we've got. Uh, we've got a lot of tools coming out over the next uh, few months um, and uh, we'll start to head into some of those uh, in a little while as well. Um, but uh, primarily, just want to just talk you through a basic um, um, calculation here that we've got and how it re relates to the uh, to the flow calculator that we've got. Now, I won't go through every nine steps of the software, but just to give you a brief understanding of this, um, this is a new project. Um, it is an air source heat pump. Um, it's a low temperature model. Uh, we're trying to keep uh, um, temperatures as low as possible. So I'll just run through to the uh, flow calculation so we can start to get some ideas of, of, um, of what flow rates, etc. we're going to need for this particular project. You can see, um, Let's get to our heat loss of what we need for this project. So I say quite a well insulated property, fairly new build, 7.83 kilowatts, so 16 rooms. Um, we can see now on, on this particular page now that we've got our, our watts per square meter all the way down there per room. And we've got our total watts that are required to heat that room at our given outside mean temperature of here is minus 2.1 degrees centigrade. So we go move on now to um, <clears throat> our optional pages um, and you can see right there there's our new flow calculation tool um, what's going to happen is this page is going to get populated all the way down here with new tools that we're bringing in um, as we speak we, we, we've got uh, we've got things in the pipeline um, now um, so we can click on to this um, flow calculation tool um, and we can click onto this point here. So we say, we're saying yes, that we want to put this in to the system. We can now click onto this unit and we can now see what we've got in this page. Now we've got um, all of your rooms down here on this, on this brand new page. We've changed the um, watts to kilowatts. So everybody kind of basically understands what is needed. There's your total kilowatts down there to heat the whole property. And these are obviously the individual ones for each room. Now something in the second column here this is the first column that you can um, change if you need to. Um, I need to just, just briefly talk about specific heat capacity of water or SHC of water. It's actually um, 4,186 joules uh, per, per kilogram. Um, but we generally round this up to 4.19 kilojoules per kilogram. We put a, a, a statement down the bottom here that you can read and there are some instructions etc. But you've also got at the top of our um, software here a help button if you ever need to look up anything or any of the processes that, that go on. Um, now 4.19 is basically the specific heat capacity of water and that's water that's pretty untreated. What the reason that this is changeable? This this would normally be the situ the, the situation for for any any products that don't have units outside or prone to freezing. But um, as we know, with new technology that's coming on, quite a lot of systems now, certainly with renewable systems, will have some form of glycol mix within the system. Now, glycol adding to water can change the specific heat capacity of that water. So what we suggest that you do is you speak to the manufacturer of the heat source, find out what the percentage of glycol mix is that's required to go into the system. But once you've got that, ask them then for the specific heat capacity number. Uh, it can change quite a lot. Um, I know that certain glycol mixes um, that you put in can drop that number down to about 3.5, 3.7. Uh, so it's well worth checking it out because it will affect your flow calculation. Okay. Um, next column is your flow temperature. Now, obviously, we all know that with air source heat pumps and ground source heat pumps, our flow temperatures, we want to get them as low as possible. That's the general idea. So if we play around with this now for argument's sake, and we say that um, we, would, we would like to get, um, I think, probably down to... Um, 40 maybe yeah if we can get to 40 40 degree flow temperature would be would be good so we'll have that on 40 um, and let's see what happens if we if we if we just do all of this at 40 to see what we can see what we can achieve yep so we're all populated now at 40 degree temperature now we've got to do our return temperature now generally with um with um 
uh, heat pumps, etc., they will have a much, much higher flow rate because the delta T, the temperature difference, the difference of temperature between the flow and the return is squeezed quite a lot. So just for this example, you can change these numbers to any, any number that you want to, but just for this particular, we will, we will actually just have this return temperature coming back at 30, for argument's sake, giving you a temperature difference of 10. Once you've filled those three in, it populates the rest that we've got here. Now you can see what it's done for that dining room that is basically what, 770 watts, so 0 0.7, nearly 0.8 kilowatts um, within that uh, property, with a specific heat of 4.19, 40 degree flow temperature, 30 degree return temperature, so a delta T of 10 is giving us 0 0.018 liters per second that we need to run through to maintain that, one liter pretty much per minute, and 64, nearly 65 liters per hour. Now the good thing about this, how we've done this now, because it's all populated from the heat loss calculation that you've done, so everything is calculated from that, so it's very bespoke, is all your totals are, are building up down here. Now if we copy all to get everything into, into that, there we go, now we can see that it's populated every little area that we've got now. So each individual one, so for each individual area you can balance to get the correct, correct flow rate for each area. But also what you can do with the total figure there, this is going to help you start sizing your primary pipe work. It's going to help start sizing your pumps, etc, um, etc. Et now this is a very basic calculator as it stands at the moment. We're going to be adding uh, resistance to flow onto this um, and uh, an awful lot of other tools that are, that are related to pipe volumes, etc, etc, and different types of pipe, um, which uh, is, is, is going to be interesting um, as, as we move forward. Now, the other thing is that um, what we try to do and try and promote is best practice within the industry and an education system. Um, so I don't know if you can see from the bottom of the page here, uh, we work very closely with a couple of companies, uh, we'll demonstrate one in a second, but um, we work quite closely with the Heating Academy in Northampton. Uh, for those of you that know or in social media, you might know him as Kim Betty. Um, Kim does um, some very, very bespoke training courses on understanding this calculation process, but not only that, um, pipe sizing um, and pump sizing, pump curves, setting head, etc, etc. Highly, highly recommended to go on this for this kind of understanding. Um, and, uh, and it kind of works in conjunction with what we're trying to do here. Um, you just click on this link down the bottom here, it'll take you to his website and, and uh, you can sign up to any of the, the uh, courses that he, he offers. Um, we also work very, very closely with a company called IMI Hydronics um, for hydronic system balancing, um, etc. Now we have these figures here um, which, we've, which we've put in um, and we need to quantify that now because what we need to do is we need to start sizing pipe work for, for say for bedroom one for argument's sake which is needs in 20, 25 litres per hour running through that or 0.4 litres um, per minute. So if you go onto um, the App Store or to Google Play you can download the IMI's app here which is uh, free of charge. Very very good bit of kit um, to use but if we um, I'm going to have to move this around a little bit, but if we if we were just to say, for argument's sake, we were going to use the, um, I don't know, the kitchen, there's 1.39 kilowatts is the heat requirement for that kitchen. We've got litres per second, per minute, per hour. We want to size the pipe work that's going to give us 1.39 kilowatts to that room. So this is quite an easy way of doing this. <clears throat> Go onto this app. Um, and right at the very, very bottom of the app, just down here, if I move this up a little bit, right down at the very, very bottom of the app, you can see this pipes section. If you click on to pipes, it gives you certain um, um, information on this. Now, the SIBSI guide states quite clearly that um, water velocities, in other words, how fast water is moving through pipework, should only be between 0 0.9 meters per second and 1.5 meters per second. And the reason that this is, is that to keep velocity noise down, um, low anything over 1.5 and you will get velocity noise and possibly um, component erosion or pipe erosion. 
Um, the other thing is that if it's too low, so if it's underneath 0 0.9, the water is not running fast enough, and this is what causes uh, sludge buildup and residue buildup within pipework and radiators and uh, underfloor heating circuits. This is a big problem, and it's a big industry of power flushing, etc., to try and clear this problem out of the way. This particular app will help you decide on what size of pipe work to do so you're within those realms of the of the SIBSI guidance uh, and you won't make the mistakes so looking at this we've just chosen copper table x copper which is what most people would use uh, we imagine this is radiators for argument's sake um, that are running through we've got this set to liters per minute but you can set this to liters per hour or you can set it to liters per second now if we remember we were looking at the um, the kitchen and the kitchen was 1.39 kilowatts We've got this set to litres per minute, as you can see here. So 1.39 kilowatts equates to 1.98 litres per minute. All right, so if we look at 1.98 litres per minute, so if we if we click on to the, um, to the app, and we clear that from there, and we type in 1.98, 1.98 litres per minute, that's correct. We then press done. We can now look to find that correct velocity. So we're looking to find the correct pipe size at 0 0.9 or between 0 0.9 and 1.5 litres per minute. So if we scroll down, well, see, there's some surprises, isn't there? Because I think most people would probably agree that they would be putting in 15 millimetre pipe. But look at that velocity. There is your, there is your velocity in here in metres per second, as we were just describing. 15 millimetre would give you 0 0.23, which is why a lot of this pipe work is actually getting um, uh, furred up and, and uh, have, have some residue in it. What is more suitable, if you remember we said 0 0.9, there it is there. So basically 8 millimetre pipe would feed that kitchen at 1.39 kilowatts. So very, very interesting um, tool and, and could save an awful lot of money on, on specification. Um, etc etc so um, I hope you like the video um, and uh, please comment um, at, uh, contact us as well on social media uh, our Twitter feed is at heat calculations that's at heat with a capital H calculation with a capital C and that's all one word many thanks bye bye now